Well, one, take one, Mark. Yep. For me, a classic album, of course, I started off as a DJ. I always listen to the music first. So the beats are very important. Then I start listening to the lyrics. What is this person saying? Does he deserve to be on the mic on that beat? Sonically, how does it sound? The quality of it, to me, is super important. The lyrics have to be relevant at that time. You know, when you listen to Illmatic, you drove by a block and you saw exactly what he was saying. This piece of work, Illmatic, was just something else. Came from a tough neighborhood, Queensbridge Project. And a lot of other greats came from there. But him, he made it happen. This right here was just like a magic moment for all of us. Nas changed my life. I wanted to name my first son Nasir over that. I, I would call him the greatest. I call him Nas at number one, you know. I like Nas because he like, he's himself. Like New York needs to always be proud of this album. If you don't got this album, then you not no real hip hop head. There are plenty of albums that are considered classics. A couple of debut albums that are considered game changers, but there's only one Illmatic. Released in 94, Nas's revered LP still reverberates in the corridors of hip-hop history 30 years later. Well, if I'm going to speak for a nation, the music got to be correct. I mean, that's what I concentrate on, listening pleasure on his lyrics and beats. You got to blend, because that's rap. Born in 1973, the son of jazz musician Oludara, Nas grew up playing the trumpet and navigating New York City's adverse urban jungles. His neighborhood, a sprawling housing project notorious for its challenges, provided the fertile ground from which the prolific MC would draw his stories. Anybody that's involved with hip hop, not everybody, uh -huh. but anybody that come from the street culture that was so deep into what they were doing, mm -hmm and learn how to turn around and evolve to other different things, he's one of the main ones I'd mention. Before I made music, I would listen to Nas, man. Nas would have that street uplifting shit. I love rappers that, um, that talk about something in a song, you know, it's really talking about a message, you know. I can learn something from it after. that be like, oh yeah, he said this, or said that, or whatever. It had me thinking, instead of just me like, oh, that was cool. I never expected my music to be accepted past my projects or mostly all the ghettos is the same thing, it's different ways of living. So I never really thought my material would be heard by as many people as heard by today. That's a blessing right there. I mean, from Illmatic to Steelmatic, it's like, nah, it's the guy. His entry into the early 90s rap scene wasn't a mere introduction, it was a revelation. As a fire-spitting youngin', his features showcased a raw, unfiltered lyricism that shook the streets and set him on the path to GOAT status. This was most relevant in his verse on 1991's Live at the Barbecue alongside Main Source, Akinelli, and Joe Fatal. My style is just straight out of my head. Sometimes there's no filter between my brain and my mouth, so it just comes out. Not only are we from the same project, we grew up together and, you know, we hung out extensively. When that album came out, I mean, the whole hood was playing that. The whole hood was playing that. We were super proud of him. Um, and that kind of like, you know, put the fire, you know what I'm saying, to us real quick. From the perspective of New York State of Mind, from the perspective of the world is yours and one love especially, like they just hit me in ways that was like, why did he say that? Oh, wow. Elmatic, this is like, psh. and just even the, you know, the people that are on the inside, on the in, inner cover, like, these are the guys that were coming in the studio that all of their voices were on it. So, like, all of these spirits in this um, vinyl is, is crazy. It's important that, you know, everything you do be right. You know what I'm saying? That's why everything about me is righteous. I try to be righteous, even though I talk about the harsh realities of the street, that's all we know, you know what I mean? But, you know, I try to get, I try to put some intellect into it. It's only right. But it wasn't until 1994 that Nas became legendary. Three years after signing to Columbia Records with the help of MC Search at the height of the East-West rap beef, 20-year-old Nas unleashed his 10-song magnum opus and the rap game was starkly and immediately altered. He was praised as the second coming of rap god Rock Kim, and his cinematic studio debut earned the Source Magazine's rare, highly coveted five mic rating. During that time, you know, your producer was your producer. So like, 
say like a Evil D, he mm -hmm. would do beats mostly for boot camp, or Pete Rock do beats for uh, CL, or right. you know, this album was a unison of some of the top dope producers that we all like, and it really wasn't a norm back then. You get a producer and you work. He got Premier, Q-Tip, Pete Rock, Large Pro, LES, all on one album, and, and it just came a cohesive piece of art. It's a masterpiece. So before Nas came out, I was doing Flojo like, boss it, check it, what, show it. And he came out with that, his lyrics. And I really, really, really studied this album. Um, and I listened to it every single day. 20 something years later, I listened to Illmatic every day to get me going. And uh, it's my favorite album ever made in hip hop music. Forget about it, it's one of the greatest albums ever. It's not even just a great rap album, it's a great album. It's so cohesive, it's a masterpiece. And I'm not the type that really looks for that, for that quick shine, you know what I'm saying? I'm in it for the long run. One album alone cannot define Nas's journey from Queensbridge to hip hop immortality, but the now multi-platinum collaboration of a young rapper and a cadre of producers ignited a revolution in the hip hop world. Like, he's, he's incredible. I don't know why the conversation is something else when we talk about the greatest MCs. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, like, we talk about this one dude all the time, because it's like, so obvious who he wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, he the great, he the illest. By all measures, Illmatic is the bar for crowning kings of New York and rap, period. There's one life, one love, so there can only be one king. It ain't hard to tell. I excel, then prevail. The mic is contacted. I attract clientele. My mic check is life or death. Breathing the sniper's breath. I exhale the yellow smoke. Up, up, boom through righteous steps. Deep like the shining. Sparkle like a diamond. Sneak a Uzi on the island. And my army jacket lining. Hit the so I directed the video for It Ain't Hard to Tell. But I really wanted to do uh, Whose World Is This? That was the one that was produced by um, Pete Rock. They had this other guy do that video, and that was the, the video right after mine. And I was like, man, I love that piano, man. I wanted to do that, but it ain't hard to tell. Come on.